What's up guys my name is Dari and I hope that you're having a great day. This video will be a follow up of the previous video where we created a complete resources API. In this video I want to continue on to create a bookstore. So if you're interested in supporting the channel and you want me to continue on creating tutorials, I've created a Patreon where you could get subscriptions and you will get benefits such as a private discord group. It's pretty difficult to maintain all the questions that I'm getting through Instagram and YouTube and even though I'm trying to respond to all of you guys, the private group in Discord will be very beneficial since it's a community where we could all help each other out. So far, we have created the index method where we show all authors right here. We got the show method where we print out one specific author. And we also have the update and delete method, so the destroy method. If we look around, we honestly don't have any validation inside our application. And in the real world, this is far from the truth. Inside the store and the update method, we're basically creating something. So we need to perform the same exact validation. So what we could do is to hop to the CLI. And let's write down PHP artisan make me a request called authors request. Now let's go back to Visio Studio Code. And inside the app folder, you can see the request and author request. So let's open it. And what we need to do is to do something in the rules. So what we want to do right here is to validate multiple things. But since we only have one object, which is the name, let's set that equal to required. Another rule. So pipe unique from the table authors. And I want to give the maximum of 255. Right now, we have defined that the name always needs to be required. And this can also be done through the database, but giving a good error message is more important than a database error. It also needs to be unique from the table authors, and it has a maximum of 255 characters. Now, before we continue on, we need to make sure that the authorized method is set to true, right here. The reason why we're doing that is because the user is authorized to make a request. So let's set it equal to true, save it, Close it off and let's open the controller one more time. And at the top of our page, we need to pull in our request. So let's say use app backslash HTTP backslash requests backslash authors request. Now, if we scroll down to the update method right here, now right inside of our update method, we need to replace the request class with the authors request. If we save it and go back to Postman, now the type of method that we have is a put. So we want to update something, but we want to update authors forward slash two. But before we do that, let's actually copy, let's say the name of ID number three. So let's copy the entire name. Let's click on send. And as you can see, the name field is required. So that's good. Let's go to params and let's set the key to name and the value to what we just copied. Let's click on send. And as you can see, the validation works because the name Maribel Upton already exists in the table authors. Before I continue on, I want to quickly change it inside the store method as well. So let's do that. Let's go up and right here, let's change request to authors request. And I'm not going to test this because it works the same exact way as the update method. But instead, I want to continue on creating the bookstore. Like I said, the books are pretty much what the application is all about since the entire app will revolve around it. So what we need to do first is to create a migration. So let's go to the CLI. Let's perform PHP artisan make me a model called book space dash A. Now, once again, the dash A flag stands for model, factory, migration, seeder, and a controller. First things first, let's go back to Visual Studio Code and rename bookstore to, let's say, books store. And let's change the class name as well, so to books controller. And we're actually pretty much ready to kick off. In order to do that, we need to open our migration. So let's scroll down. Let's open the latest migration. And as you can see right here, we're going to define the books table. Now we obviously need an ID. Then we have a table string where we pull in a name. Then we have a table text, which will be the description. And we also have the publication year of a book. So let's say table. And once again, this is not an integer, but it's a string. 
and let's set that equal to publication underscore year. Are we done? I somehow want to build a relationship between the books. So how does this work? One book can have multiple authors and one author can have multiple books. So we're talking about a many to many relationship. So we need to somehow link the author ID inside the books table. In my opinion, the best way to handle this is through a pivot table. But before we create our pivot table, we need to migrate our current books table since it works on the date time. So let's do that. Let's go to iTerm. Let's perform PHP artisan migrate. And as you can see, our create books table has been created. And right now we're ready to set up a pivot table. Inside our CLI, let's perform PHP artisan make me a migration called create underscore book underscore author excuse me, underscore table. All right, this one has been created as well. So let's open it. And there is a new migration, obviously. In here, we basically need to have a table with two columns. The first one is the author ID, and the second one is the book ID. Let's get rid of the ID and timestamps that we have. So first, we have a table with an unsigned big integer with the name of author underscore ID. Then we need to link it to our authors table. So let's say table foreign is a author underscore ID. On the line below, hit tab, access operator, because we're going to reference it on the ID. So let's say reference and then on authors, excuse me. And whenever it cascades, we want to delete. Now we need to do the same thing for the books table. So let's copy what we have and paste it at the bottom. Let me align this. I hate whenever this happens with Visual Studio Code. All right. Now the second one is called book underscore ID. The foreign key is book underscore ID. It references ID on the table books and cascade on delete. Save it. And I forgot to close it off with a semicolon, both of them. Save it. All right. Let's go to iTerm. Migrate it. So let's say PHP artisan migrate. That was a typo. All right. Our migration has been created. And to double check this, let's go to our MySQL tab. And let me zoom in. And let's perform use bookstore. Show tables. And as you can see, we have our book underscore author table. So that's desk book underscore author. We have our author ID, book ID, and they're both a foreign key. The next step is to set up our books factory because we need some dummy data inside of it. So let's open the factories folder. So inside our databases, we have a folder called factories. Let's open book factory, scroll down to definition. And right here, we need to set the name equal to this faker name, which will generate a name for us. Let's do the same thing for the description. Set it equal to this faker sentence. And we have the publication underscore year. And since I want our integer to be a string, we need to place a string right in front of it of this faker year, which will create a year for us. The next step is to add our seeder. Before we focus on our book seeder, we need to change something inside our database seeder because we need to change the call method. So the seeder that we're going to call equal to book seeder. Save it, close it off. Let's open the book seeder because we need to perform something in here. And what we want to perform is a backslash app, backslash models, backslash book, colon, colon, factory. We want to create five rows and we want to perform a create. Let's save it. Let's go to iTerm. Let's open the other tab that we just had. All right. And here we need to migrate it and seed it. So let's say PHP artisan migrate space dash dash seed. And as you can see, it has been seeded. Now let's double check this. So let's go to the MySQL tab again. Let's select everything from books. Well, something went wrong right here because we're missing. I'm not sure if I saved the file. So let's roll back it. Let's say PHP artisan migrate rollback one more time. So we rolled back twice. Let's go to Visual Studio Code, save the file. Let's close them all off. 
All right, let's go to iTerm. Let's run PHP Artisan Migrate. Let's go to MySQL. Let's select everything from books again. Well, that's desk books. And as you can see, the name description and publication year have been added. What we need to do right now is to seed it one more time. So let's hit the arrow up. All right, it has been seeded. Let's open MySQL. Let's select everything from books again. And as you can see, we have five new rows in here. Now, just like with the authors, let's open our model because we need to set the attributes that we're having inside a fillable array. So let's do that. Let's open the book model right under the has factory. Let's create a protected variable called fillable. And let's set it equal to an array. And we want the name, description, and the publication underscore year to be filled in. Save it. And I actually think that we're ready to set up our route. So let's open the api.php file. We can duplicate our forward slash authors endpoint. So let's do that. Let's change the second one to forward slash books. And don't forget to change the controller to books controller. And let's pull in the books controller at the top. Let's duplicate it. And let's change the second one to books controller. Save it. Close off the file. Now we don't need a model and we don't need a factory and seeder. Now, before we define our relationship and other stuff, I want to focus on the books controller first. And before we start off with our controller, we need to define our resource. So let's open the CLI. Let's go to the other tab again and let's perform PHP artisan make me a resource called books resource. Hit enter. Let's open it inside the app folder. All right. Now what we actually could do is to pretty much copy the author's resource. So the entire return value, paste it or replace it with the books resource return value. Now, what do we have? We do have an ID. The type needs to be books and we have attributes. We do have a name but we also have a description. So let's set that equal to this description. And these are the columns inside the database. And we also have a publication underscore year, which is equal to this publication underscore year comma. I think this is it, right? We have a name, description and publication year. Now let's save it, close it off. Let's hop to our controller. So books controller, and right inside of the index method, let's return a authors resource, colon, colon, collection. And inside the index method, we want to show all books. So we need to return a books resource, colon, colon, collection. And we need to pass in the books model. So book, colon, colon, all. Now let's save it. Let's open Postman. Let's change the endpoint to forward slash books. And let's change the method to get. Let's click on send. And as you can see, the books resource does not exist because we need to pull it in. And we can do that by going to the authors controller, go to the top, copy the authors resource, paste it inside the books controller, and let's replace it to books resource. Save it, go back to Postman, click on send. And as you could see, let me make it bigger. We just pulled in all the books that we created. Now I want to go over the rest pretty fast because we have already created when we created the authors. So what I want to do is to open the authors controller, go to the store method, copy the entire store method and paste it inside the store method of the books controller. Now we do need the faker class, but we're not going to create the author, but the book. We're going to call the book model. We do need a name, but we obviously have a description, which we will get from the faker sentence. And we have a publication underscore year that we're going to pull in from the faker year. We're not going to return an author's resource, but we're going to return a books resource. And we're going to pass in the book. So variable book, save it. Go back to Postman. We're going to hit the forward slash books endpoint, but we're going to perform a post method. Click on send. And as you could see, 
a new book has been created. Now the next method is the show method. And this is very easy. We're going to return a new books resource. And we're going to pass in the variable book because we're grabbing it from the URL. Save it, go back to Postman. Let's say that we want to pull in book number one, but it is a get method. Click on send. And as you can see, we have our book number one. Now the last two are the update and delete method. So let's copy it once again from the authors controller. All right. Paste it inside the books controller. Change author to book. We're going to update the name. We want to update the, well, let's actually duplicate it twice. All right, the second one is the description. And the last one is the publication underscore year. Now the input name is name. Second one is description. And the last one is publication underscore year. Save it, back to Postman. Change the method to put. We are going to update ID number one, so the one that we have on the screen right now. And we need to pass in params. So the first one is the name. Let's set that equal to Laravel for beginners. Let's set the description to course created by Dari. And the last one is the publication underscore year. And let's set that to 2020. Let's click on send. And we have another error because we obviously haven't changed the author's resource. So let's set that equal to books resource. And we're going to pass in variable book. Click on send. And as you can see, we have updated book number one. Now the last method is the destroy method. So let's say we want to copy everything again in the books controller, paste it in. We're going to delete a book with a response. Now the book that we want to delete is a delete method. We don't need all the params in the URL. All right, now let's say that we want to delete book number six. Click on send. And as you could see, we get a 404 no content. I think that we're pretty much ready to work on our relationships. Now the issue that we have is that we're using a pivot table. So how do we get data inside the table? There are lots of different options, and I honestly still haven't figured out which is the best way. So for now, I want to fill a pivot table through the CLI. So let's go to MySQL, and in here, let's say insert, well, let's actually say desk book underscore author. All right, so we have an author and a book ID. So let's say that we want to insert into book underscore author, the author underscore ID, comma, book underscore ID, with the values of, let's say, two to book number one. Hit the arrow up, and let's say, then we want to assign author number three to book number one, and let's do one more. So let's say ID number four for the author to book number one. All right, let's select everything from our book underscore author, and this looks fine, and we're ready to set up our relationship. The best way to do that, in my opinion, is to create a new model for our pivot table. So inside our CLI, we're basically going to say PHP artisan make me a model called book author, and we're going to pass in the dash A flag. All right, let's go to Visual Studio Code. Honestly, whenever I deal with pivot tables, I usually define the table that I'm going to use. So let's open the model, so the book author, we have a protected variable table, which is the book underscore author. Let's save it. Let's open the book model, because right here, we're going to define a relationship to the author. So first, we need to define the method public function author. We're going to return this has many true. We have to pass in some params in here. So let's go inside the parentheses and hit enter. Now the first one in single quotes is the author model. So let's say backslash app backslash models backslash author comma on the line below the book author. So the pivot table. So let's say backslash app backslash models backslash book author comma. Then the next four are actually optional, but I prefer to use it. 
So let's say single quotes, book underscore ID. So the current model in the pivot table. Add a comma. On the line below, we need to pass the related and current model ID, which is both ID for us. So let's say ID, comma, ID, comma, and the last one is a related model ID in the pivot table. So in our case, it's author underscore ID. Save it, close it off, close it off, and let's go to the show method. Let's see where it is. I completely lost it. All right, right here. Let's actually return, let's say, book author right here, just to see what the output is. Save it, go to Postman, and let's say that we want to get book number one. Click on send. As you can see, we have three authors. So Holly Klein, Marble Upton, and Dr. Alfred Keeling. And you can see that we're getting it through the Laravel true key. So this is the data through our pivot table where we find the user that created the book. Now, this is obviously not how you want to output it. What we want to print is inside our attributes, the author names. So let's define the return value inside the show method. So let's say return a new instance of the books resource. And let's pass in variable book, save it, and let's open our books resource. Under the name, let's add a author. We could pass it as an entire array of attributes. So let's actually do that first. So let's say this author, save it, go to Postman, click on send. And as you can see, we have our book ID number one with the authors. Opinions differ right here, but I actually don't care about the created at, updated at, and the Laravel true key. So let's change it up since we only want to show the ID and the name. Let's go to our model. So our author model, and right below our protected fillable, let's create a protected variable hidden, and let's set it equal to an array. Let's go inside the array and hit single quotes. And right here, we can basically define what we don't want to show the user. So let's say Laravel underscore true underscore key. Then we have the created underscore at, and we have the updated underscore at. Save it. Go to Postman, click on Send, and as you can see, this looks way better. Before I wrap up the video, I got a little exercise for you, and I want you to let me know in the comment section down below how you fix the issue. I want you to create a relationship from the authors to the books, so the other way around. Now, that being said, this was it for this video. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.